Hey everyone, it's Hindash. Welcome back to my channel. I have missed you and I know it's been a bit inconsistent over here, but I'm so excited to be back with this video that's a bit more of an updated take on my last I do my sister's makeup. For this video, I'm so happy to be back with my sister Noor and you might have recognized her. We've done two videos uh, previously and this is the updated take on it. And of course we have Timmy snoozing. <laughs> In this look, I really wanted to kind of replicate what we did in the first video, but elevate it and make it a bit more special in terms of you can do this on a wedding, you can do this on a really like beautiful event, and you can dial it back for an everyday look. It's definitely on the lifted, winged, um, all outside when it comes to the eyes. But it's a look me and my sister really enjoy, and she really wanted this full lifted glam uh, something super special to, you know, always makes you feel good. <laughs> I mean, you all know how much I love my sister and she was visiting in Dubai for the summer and we haven't seen her here for three years, so she had to be in my studio. <laughs> so as always, I'm going to be carrying you through this tutorial, through skin prep, skincare, and the full makeup step by step. So subscribe if you haven't already to be notified on my upcoming videos. Enjoy. So for today's look, I really wanted to replicate our first video together, which is now archived. The focus is on lifting, highlighting, and enhancing Noor's features. Starting with skincare, I'm using a mist to refresh and prep Noor's skin. It's also a great pick-me-up. Noor's skin is on the drier side, so I'm using hydrating textures and layers. With this serum, I'm applying it all over the face and massaging it in. Now, Noor does use retinols and active ingredients in her skincare. So this is a great step for me to see how her skin reacts in terms of how much moisture it needs. She's also on the quite sensitive side, so I'm avoiding anything with essential oils because based on our previous experience, that can irritate her skin. Now that I've worked this into the skin, I'm going to apply an eye mask. I love an eye mask for special occasions. Keep this in the fridge for extra depuffing action and apply a generous layer of lip balm or a lip mask. I typically prefer doing eyes first if I'm using an eye mask, but for the sake of the video, I'm finishing off the skin. Apply a lightweight hydrating eye cream underneath and around the eyes. Don't forget to get underneath the brow bone and really pat and massage it in gently. You can do this between the brows and around your nose and mouth for an extra boost. Now for my last step, I really believe in good skin prep in place of a traditional primer. So I'm using this rich cream, which I've grown to really, really love because it gives the skin that slip and creates a cushioning layer. This is where you really want to take advantage of that slip and treat yourself to massaging your face. And as I always say, start to brainstorm what look you want to go for and what you want to enhance today. For Noor, I really wanted to take my time with the skin so you can take a step back in the final look and have it be all about the eyes. And by the way, Noor is incredible at makeup and always sends me her makeup looks on days when she's off to work. And she creates the most beautiful color mixes and layers using my Beautopsy, Monochromance, and Color Fluids. So she's a pro. If you're doing this during the daytime, you want to follow it up with a sunscreen or find a moisturizing sunscreen as your last step combo. To start off base, I'm using a glowy luminizer on the high points of the face, tapping it in with my fingers. I usually mix a liquid highlighter in with the foundation, but because this is a gel, I'm trying it out on its own first to see how it works with bare skin. I really love the translucent clear base that this has. For subtle color correction, I'm using the foundation mixed in with my color fluid in Rising and adding a touch of that to my foundation to create a light peachy apricot shade. The reason I'm using a foundation is because I want a more sheer fluid color, nothing full coverage because we're not looking for intense orange correction. And with a fluffy eyeshadow brush, I'm able to really control and diffuse my placement as I tap and blend. You'll see that because we use her foundation shade, the correction shade isn't far off from her undertone and just melts in. For an ultra natural finish, I'm also tapping the excess with my finger because we still have foundation and concealer to go and I don't want to overwhelm that area. I'm also spot correcting around the face. Now with the foundation, I'm stippling and buffing this in using my feather light layer technique of treating the foundation application like a tinted moisturizer, really getting it into the contours of the face and getting a light layer down the neck and underneath the jaw so that it looks seamless under any light. I always believe in letting the foundation formula shine with the lightest layer of application because pretty much most foundation formulas are going to look the same if you're going to apply them very heavy handed. You want to allow that formula to work with minimal product. And that also applies to a full coverage foundation. 
at the end, concealer is really there to help you through those areas that you want to conceal, if any. I also believe in a much lighter application for the forehead. If this is where you're more expressive, like I am, for example, I really like to stay away from heavy liquids in the center of the forehead and between the brows. For cream bronzer, I'm going for something more effortless and on the lighter side. And with a fluffy, dense brush, applying that on the contours of the cheeks, slightly higher up as I would do blush, and on the temples. I really want a soft, airbrushed look, so I'm tapping around that application and bringing it on the jawline. I'm softly contouring the tip of the nose, barely on the bridge. And repeat the same steps on the other side. I like to bronze before concealer if I'm going for that lifted look, because it keeps everything looking more precise. I'm mixing a few concealer shades for a custom tone, and with a damp beauty blender, applying that on the under eyes, but quite lower, so it has space to blend upwards. And a focused application on the outer corners. Now I can start to blend up and out and taking that around the nose and the corners of the mouth and center of the chin. I'll now start to tap and blend this in, getting it into the inner corners and right up by the lash line, softly tapping and diffusing it in, picking up the excess as I tap. Now moving on to liquid blush. And with this very dusty muted nude pink, I'm applying that in between the concealer and the bronzer, using quick circular tapping motions to create a beautiful blend. I love that this color is almost like a rosy bronzer, adding that layer of warmth to the skin. You can also go in with your blender to diffuse any edges, adding a touch of what's left on the nose and chin. And I always love a very subtle touch just over the forehead. So beautiful. For an eye base, I'm taking my color fluids in Carve and Canvas in equal parts, mixing them together to create Noor's perfect base tone and applying that all over the lid. This will create a neutral base on Noor that will intensify shadows. And I like to work one eye at a time because once it sets, it's budge proof and crease proof. These create amazing one and done shadows. Now we can move to powders. I'm using shades from my Beautopsy and Monochromance palette, creating a soft brown to frame the outer corners, softly diffused into the crease with a larger brush. I'm not being too precise with this. Then with just the lighter beige, going around the edges to diffuse. The main color story here is not to lean too warm or too cool. Mixing tones is usually great for that and it adds dimension. With a light beige, I'm going over the crease and brow bone for a very subtle highlight and lift. This is also mainly just to blend the edges and packing on that color on the center of the lids with a fluffy brush. Packing it on but still creating a softness that's not dusty. This helps to contour the eyes so that when we add shimmer, it has a lighter backdrop. Moving on to pencil, I'm using my intra pencil to start creating that lifted shape, which starts off as more of a classic wing, lining her eyes close to the lash line. Then with a smaller smudger brush, I'm starting to map out the eyes and wing with her looking straight ahead, so that we can see how it's framing the direction of the eyes, winging it out and into the crease. This pencil is super creamy and has great playtime to blend and diffuse. So then I'll start to blend the edges, moving up into that winged shape that dramatically defines the outer crease. Now with the medium browns, I'm going over my outer crease work to intensify and diffuse. This starts to create a seamless gradient that looks airbrushed. I can then take the darkest brown that matches the pencil, which is super warm and chocolatey, and set and intensify that color. With this step, you want to mimic the blending of the liner work, basically tracing it, making sure that I get into the lash line so I have no gaps. Same steps on the other eye. I'm then taking this stunning glitter shadow that's like a top coat and patting it on the center of the lid where we've applied that lighter cream shade and applying layers of mascara to the top and bottom lashes using a fan brush. I love using medium individual lashes to the outer corners and brushing up the brows so that I can see the shape more clearly, filling them in with an ash brown pencil, starting lightly from the bottom. This creates a soft background color that frames the shape. Then with the brow pen, I'm just filling in any gaps with hair-like strokes, mainly focusing on the tail of the brow. Then sealing everything with the brow gel. For powder, I'm using a loose powder that's brightening with a triangle puff. Pressing in a light layer of powder into the skin. I love the soft brightness that this gives. I also didn't see that shadow smudge on that side of the under eye and it bothers me because the lighting plays tricks on me while I'm filming, but it's all right. <laughs> I love taking a layer underneath the cheekbones to define and then brushing it later. Creating a mix for the nose tip contour, I love doing this. 
and contouring the top lip with that same shade, slightly on the bottom too. I'm highlighting the top bridge of the nose, tip, cupid's bow and cheekbones very softly. For powder blush, I'm going for the same barely there tone, just to sort of set that blush earlier, creating more soft dimension, and lining her lips with a rosy lip liner, following her natural shape, keeping the center fairly free. For the lip combo, I'm using my color fluid in Hartis and applying a very thin layer all over the lips. This is that really beautiful universal rose that can be worn in so many different ways. I'm almost buffing a thin layer into the lips for airbrushed soft coverage and topping it with an ultra glossy lip, then accentuating her beauty marks. With a pencil brush, I'm softly defining her lower lash line and setting the entire face. And that completes this look on my beautiful sister Noor. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed filming it. It's always nice to revisit certain videos and looks and recreate them. I hope this was helpful for you to create. Tag me if you do and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.